So let's look at another example that's going to use a, a similar process. Um, what do you think is going to happen here, though? Let's just predict what this graph might look like. So in the last example, we had two cosine of t and two, two sine of t, um, and we end up with a circle. So what if these coefficients are different? What do you think that's going to do? Let's, let's think about this. The x values now, uh, since cosine goes anywhere from negative 1 to 1, then 3 times that is going to go anywhere from negative 3 to 3. So our x values are going to vary. They're going to range from negative 3 to 3. Our y values are going to range from where to where? From negative 4 to 4. So since the x values have a, a smaller range than the y values, what do you think this is going to be? It's going to be an ellipse. So it's still going to loop like the last one did, but it's not going to, it's not going to have the same range on the x uh, axis as the y axis, so it's going to be an ellipse. So let's try to eliminate variables here the same way we did before. Um, if I do that, I want to I get cosine squared of t here by itself. <laughs> And so I get cosine squared of t is equal to what? x squared over 9. And here I want to get sine squared of t by itself. This is a, a very useful identity, the Pythagorean identity. Uh, sine squared of t is going to be what? y squared over 16. And so we know that sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is going to be 1. So I can rewrite this as y squared over 16 plus x squared over 9 is equal to 1. And this is actually the standard form of an ellipse, right? Actually, in standard form, we like to write the x's first. But uh, what this tells me is that the minor axis along the x-axis is going to be 3. Um, do you guys remember ellipses, equations of ellipses? Uh, and then the major axis is going to be along the y-axis, uh, and that's going to be 4. Um, so it's going to have a radius of 4 along the y-axis and a radius of 3 along the x-axis, and it's going to be centered at 0, 0. So what we've done, again, is we've converted these parametric equations into rectangular, a rectangular equation. It's not a function, but it's a relation, um, and this is something that's familiar to us. What about the range on t here? Do I need to worry about this? Um, I've got a full period here, right, from 0 to 2 pi. So since my cosine is going to end up back where it started, my sine is going to end up back where it started, um, by going from 0 to 2 pi, it's just going to be one loop, right? Does that make sense? 